Hey, welcome back. Um, how do I do this again? It's been a while. Um, you might hate me, but the next game I might play is um, Lawn Mowing Simulator. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's a little bit more thought intensive than a game like this. Like, you can't um, mow the lawn like too hard or you like cut up the grass and stuff. And so it might not be a great game to do here, but uh, I was having fun doing it by myself. <laughs> Just mowing a lawn. Um, I liked it. Um, so I'm recording today because in a couple hours I'm going to my improv. My first improv class in like three months. It's been a long time. Um, so I'm going to record like today and maybe tomorrow. Uh, because I'm like exercising more. So I don't know. It's a, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> um, I started reading this book that I wanted to talk about today maybe. Um, it's called, we're reading it in the book club, How to Be Yourself. I'm through the first chapter, and I have a question. Um, oops, you can fall if you want. Because um, Sadie's doing this cool thing where she actually got the author to do a Zoom with us. And like we can ask her questions and stuff, which is in like two or three weeks or something um and i've already kind of thought of a question i haven't finished the book so i keep thinking like well maybe she answers this question later but <laughs> um there's one story that she brings up in the first chapter that kind of epitomizes like stress that i have uh, th the book is really good obviously um and it's like specifically about social anxiety, which is like, there's not really a lot of books like that. <clears throat> and I related to like everything she said. She's kind of like perfectly, she knows what's going on in my head. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to say that first because it is really good book, very helpful. Um, but there's kind of like this tone which is good, but that bothers me a little bit. And especially when she talks about, the, she brings up a story about this guy named Jim who, um, we'll talk about the story later, but it kind of, it's like a little bit too sunshiny and like positive. I mean, that's a good thing, but it's like, it's like frustrating when it's like, it's not, doesn't feel like it's taking it seriously, like how, serious the problem is it's like it seems like she thinks oh the biggest problem for social anxiety people is like you can't raise your hand in school like that's kind of the I mean if you look at the picture in the front it's like a little girl with behind balloons it's like it's kind of like targeted towards like teenage girls or something I don't know <laughs> um she keeps bringing up like, oh, you'll be able to raise your hand in school. I'm like, okay. But will it also help me not want to kill myself? <laughs> um, because like, that's where it leads. But can we talk about that too? Um, maybe she gets there though. But there's, um, there's a story about this guy named Jim who when he was a kid, there was this girl he liked and he would walk past her, he would have to walk past her door every day. Um, but he, whenever he saw her, he would kind of like hide because he was avoiding her. And like that, that chapter is about like avoidance. Um, like avoidance is bad because it turned out that girl actually liked him and he should have talked to her. 
and because like 30 years later he meets the girl again and she's like oh so this conversation that they have I'm trying to figure out how to explain like what my problem is and like what my this, this is the point of the video today is I want to think of a question to ask her name's Ellen Hendrickson I hate when my mouth is hold on I never do this but I hate when it's like yum, yum, yum. <laughs> um, so I kind of wrote down a question but I wanted to like talk through this story because it kind of bothered me it's this idea of like I feel like I'm not normal um, and then Ellen Hendrickson will be like oh like I have social anxiety too and it's like okay that's cool and, and she does, and she did, and she's like, oh, I got better, which is, like, good. Um, I don't feel normal. So this guy, I want to just, like, let's just focus in on this interaction that this guy, Jim, has with this girl. Her name is Dina. 30 years later, at a party. Um, Jim doesn't want to go to the party but he goes and he's like, I don't want to go. It's like going to be, I'm not going to like it. And then, oh, Dina's there. So then the specific thing is Dina sits down next to Jim and talks to him. And then Ellen Hendrickson says like, Jim starts telling Dina about his life and like how he was married and how he got divorced. I'm like, okay, see, you have to stop there because I can't do that. <laughs> I'm not normal. Jim is normal. Like, normal people have a way out of social anxiety because they have these normal experiences like marriage, like divorce, that I don't have. People use that to connect with other people. He used that experience to connect with Dina um, and talk to her. I wouldn't be able to talk to her because... I don't have those common experiences. I didn't do anything. I don't have any friends. I don't have any marriages or whatever. So what am I supposed to talk about? I can't, I wouldn't be able to talk to her. She'd talk and then I'd be like, oh, okay. And then she'd leave and, and, and that would be it. That's what always happens because I don't have a way in. I guess my question is to her would be like, how do I feel more normal? Because I must be like kind of normal. But I don't feel that way when I read all these stories about people, about Ellen Hendrickson being like, oh, I was nervous to go to the professor's office. I'm like, but, you, but you're normal. <laughs> like, yeah. this is like all normal stuff. And she makes it seem like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just read what I wrote. Does that make sense? That was something I kind of thought of before, is like, I, I, when I meet people, I just don't have this common life thing. Like, I went to school, but like, I didn't do anything at school. I didn't really like it. What am I supposed to say? I, I can't connect with people. I wasted 29 years of my life, like, not connecting with people. So, so how, like, what's my way in? Like, how do I get in? I don't know how to get in there. I guess that could maybe be the question. But I'm sure if I say that, she's going to be like, no, you are normal. Um, so if she does say that, then I, my question would be, how do I feel normal? Because I don't feel normal. <laughs> um, what do I do? Oh, I wanted to buy another gun after this. I'm almost done. It's my least favorite part when I'm at the end. And I have to find all the little spots. Um, Jim's story hurt me. <laughs> She's still too normal. Jim is married and gets divorced. Okay, but he was married. Oh, the, another aspect of that story is like he doesn't want to go to this party, but he has this friend named Rosaline who's like, hey,
<laughs> um, Rosaline's like, hey, Jim, like, you need to get out more. And Jim's like, I don't want to. And then Ellen Hendrickson says something kind of frustrating where she's like, everybody has a Rosaline. She says something like that. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't have a Rosaline. Um, I don't have a friend who would push me to do stuff. She has this, like, I don't know if she, uh, she must. And I, I'm sure, like, she gets into it later. But, like, it doesn't feel like she fully understands the depth of it. Um, it's this, I don't know the words. Like, too sunshiny and, like, normal. Like, these are normal people. Like, what about me? Why isn't she talking about me? Like, she understands the, um... Like, how it manifests and like, oh, it's hard to go to the grocery store. But she hasn't really, like, gotten, like, into that emotion of it and, like, the the pain of it. It just all seems so, like, oh, you know, sometimes it's hard and, and you hide from girls. And I, I don't know how to describe that, but it's just not really deep enough. I don't know. And my, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I, f I feel bad judging the book because, like, I like it and, um, and it's helpful. And, like, if it is marketed to teenage girls, then I don't want it to be super dark, right? <laughs> I don't want it to be, like, yo, you might want to kill yourself. And then teenage girls, like, well, I never thought of that before, but I guess I do. <laughs> no, oops. <laughs> um, Um, and obviously the book has to be like, oh, there's hope, because what's it going to be like? Oh, yeah, well, you're kind of screwed. You have social anxiety, you're screwed. Um, it's it's doing as good a job as anything I've ever read that, at explaining it and, and giving good advice. Um, and I'll get to that like later. After I finish the book, I'll talk more about it. I'll do a whole vlog on it. Um... But I, um, I guess I'm done for the day. I just want to get my question. What's my question? Um, yeah, that Rosaline thing kind of bothered me. Every she, she said something like that. Like, everybody's got a Rosaline that's going to push you. Why would you say that? <laughs> um, and that's the way I feel kind of in the besties group. Is like, they have kids and husbands and wives and friends and I'm like you guys are like so normal like you, do you understand <laughs> how weird it is how weird I am like it's not applicable to me I'm too weird I can't connect with people I have no way in I can connect with these social anxiety people a little bit because we all have social anxiety. But I can't connect with other people. The book said something like 17% of people have social anxiety disorder. Um, she calls it capital S social anxiety. Because she's like 99% of all people experience social anxiety. And the other 1% are psychopaths. <laughs> um, I gotta get up there. Ooh, that's dirty. Um, yeah, still a lot to clean. Only 95% still. I'll, I'll finish this house this week. I'll do like three or four episodes here. If it really takes that long. Um, Okay, so let me just read. I had like a question. Dina felt like she could talk to Jim because Jim is normal. He had a life. He was married. He was divorced. People don't want to talk to me because I can't connect with them. I don't seem normal. Divorce is normal. Jim doesn't feel normal, but he is. I don't feel normal, but I'm right. <laughs> that's the thing. Okay, that's a good way. I should have just started with that. That's a good way to summarize the frustration like this book is for people who don't feel normal but they are so like their solution is to just 
stop thinking that they're not normal and, and to do these, there's all these tools that you can do to help you stop thinking that. But like, what if you're not normal? I need, I don't feel normal, but I'm right. <laughs> I, I, I don't have all these common experiences. So what are my tools? Are they the same? Maybe. Um, so I've been making an effort to stop avoiding things and be more social, but every time I do, I can't shake the feeling that there's a barrier to connection because I've been avoiding these things for so long. Jim's story is a good example. He was able to talk and connect with Dina, blah, blah, blah. He felt approachable to Dina. But what if you have never had a partner or a friend? How do you connect with people? Whenever I hear stories like that, I always look for the normal thing. Yeah, I wanted to like actually think of a question today, but like that's fine. It's good enough. Um, I think I got bit by a spider. I just saw a spider on my chair that I killed, and, and now I have a little bump here. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Um, I'll have a lot more positive things to say about the book, but I was just trying to think of a question. And the best questions always kind of come from something that make you feel like, ugh, there's something wrong. Like, I'm frustrated with this. There's a lot of other good stuff in the book that I wrote down, and it's a very good book. Um, and she's very smart, and she knows a lot about social anxiety, more than I ever will. Um, and I should start following her advice. But I was just trying to think of a question, and that's something that was frustrating me. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not, like, criticizing the book. I'm just, like, I just want to express that I'm not feeling, like, I'm feeling kind of frustrated sometimes when I read certain things. Anyway, see you tomorrow.